1960s was an eventful decade, most known for the Civil War and beginning of the Reconstruction Era. Today, we're going to dive into what led up to the Civil War, what occurred during the war, how it ended, and the effects the war had on society. Let's start with the election of 1860. The candidates were Republican Abraham Lincoln, Democrat Stephen Douglas, and Constitutional Union Party's John Bell. November 6, 1860 was Election Day in America. The results came out and Abraham Lincoln won, with 180 total electoral votes. Abraham Lincoln was elected the 16th president of the United States and would spend the majority of his presidency dealing with the Civil War. Moving on to 1861. There was intense separation in political and economic views between the North and South during the time Lincoln began his presidency. Eventually, the Confederate States of America were formed. South Carolina became the first state to officially secede from the Union on December 20, 1860. Over the course of six months, ten more states seceded. Abraham Lincoln was inaugurated on March 4, 1861. Nearly one month later, on April 12, 1861, the Civil War began. The meaning of the Civil War narrows down to a battle regarding the issue of slavery. However, there were many other aspects that went to the beginning of the war, such as economic, social, and political differences against other states. The battle at Fort Sumter was the first Civil War battle, and it took place on April 12th to 13th, 1861, where Confederate troops fired. The next four years, the Civil War continued and many battles occurred. The Battle of Shiloh happened in April of 1862, where the Confederate Army launched a surprise attack on Union forces. The Battle of Antietam occurred on September of 1862, and to this day remains the deadliest one-day battle in American military history. The Battle of Gettysburg was from July 1st to 3rd, in 1863 near Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. This is an important battle because the North won and also began to win the Civil War. When he addresses this battle, Abraham Lincoln gives the famous Gettysburg Address, where he uses quotes from the United States Constitution to encourage people that the war is not just a fight to preserve the Union, it is also to bring equality to everyone. Finally, we get to the year 1865. First, Abraham Lincoln was re-elected for his second term in November of 1864, and his second term began on March 4, 1865. After a long time, the Civil War finally concluded in the spring of 1865. Robert E. Lee surrendered the last Confederate army to Ulysses S. Grant. This was the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse, named after the location of the surrender. Nearly two weeks after the surrender, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. On April 14, 1865, Abraham Lincoln attended a play at Ford's Theater. While he was there, John Wilkes Booth shot him. Lincoln was taken to the Peterson House, and he died in the morning of April 15, 1865. Following Abraham Lincoln's death, Andrew Johnson filled the role of United States President. Andrew Johnson had very different opinions on Abraham Lincoln, mainly that he was a Democrat and Lincoln was a Republican. Because of this, they had different plans for the era following the Civil War. The time period following the Civil War was called the Reconstruction Era. Many decisions and movements began during this era that influenced the society and world we live in today, such as places of higher education beginning, along with the 13th through 15th Amendments being ratified and accepted, and the female voting rights movement beginning. Another important aspect of the Reconstruction era was the Freedmen's Bureau. They provided the refugees in the South with clothing and food. They helped previously enslaved people find work. The election of 1868 was the first election during the Reconstruction era. The candidates were Republican Ulysses S. Grant and Democrat Horatio Seymour. Ulysses S. Grant defeated Seymour by 134 electoral votes. The rest of the decade was a continuation of rebuilding the southern states. One fun fact is that in 1869, Wyoming became the first state in the United States where women had the right to vote. The Civil War and Reconstruction presented by themes. America and National Identity Prior to the 14th Amendment, there was not legal protection for citizens of different backgrounds. The law ensures people equal rights and protection of the law. The 14th Amendment changed the previously enslaved people's lives by being provided U.S. citizenship and releasing them from their lives of slavery. Politics and Power the role of power in the United States changed during the Reconstruction. The country's new president, Andrew Johnson, had different beliefs and plans than Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln designed a plan to lead America through the Reconstruction, but once he was murdered, those plans fell through. The plan quickly became punishing the South, which lengthened the process of reunifying drastically. Work, Exchange, and Technology Most households owned slaves prior to the Civil War. Slaves were severely mistreated in these households, but the idea of slavery was the social norm, so many participated in this. The theme of work, exchange, and technology correlates to the American lifestyle before the war because the slaves impacted the economy in many states through their work and the crops along with the growing cotton industry. Culture and Society The culture of America became much tenser than before during the Reconstruction. The 
the African Americans began their lives as free, regular citizens, but the Southerners, and in particular white supremacists, were not welcoming to African Americans joining their society as equal members. Black codes and Jim Crow laws were introduced, which left African Americans segregated from the whites and gave them poor quality rooms, utilities, and resources. Migration and Settlement More land was available to purchase in the South, so many Northerners migrated there. One main reason for the big migration was the cotton industry in the South, and many Northerners had hopes of making profit off of these cotton plantations. Through the migration of many people, the South's population, economy, cotton production, and social climate positively changed. Geography and Environment During the war, many battles took place, many of which were very destructive. As a result of the destruction caused in the battles, reconstruction was difficult. The land destruction caused many people to reevaluate their necessities and daily routines as they needed to help change the land. The land destroyed during the war, along with slowed transportation and production, had a great effect on the economy of the United States environment. America and the World During the Reconstruction, the U.S. avoided foreign affairs and maintained domestic policies and plans to reunify the country. Rebuilding the U.S. post-Civil War was time-consuming. America was so caught up in rebuilding it and putting together their own nation that the U.S. had very little contact with other nations and countries. First, African Americans' lives were changed. The Civil War and Reconstruction brought big change to the lives of African Americans. With the 15th Amendment being ratified, African Americans now had the right to vote. Congress recognized their suffrage and passed this new law. Second, the Underground Railroad was completed. The Underground Railroad was a system created during the time of slavery and the Civil War in which slaves were provided shelter and a way to escape the South. Many escaped to Canada, where they were given the freedom they were deprived of in the United States. The most famous conductor of the Underground Railroad is Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman performed several escapes from slavery on her own, and she continued to guide other slaves to their freedom. Third, the economy was changed. The whole environment and economy changed during the Civil War. Farmland and businesses were destroyed. Politics were very tense. Population was decreasing due to many deaths in the war, and many people were migrating to the South. And that concludes our timeline and presentation on everything that happened during the 1860s. Thanks for watching. Thank you.